Welcome. This is Coach Dorf. Today, we're going to talk about the chain rule. This is going to allow us to take derivatives of more complicated functions. All right. So to do this, let's let's review a few ideas, first of all. OK, if I have um, the function f of x equals x to the 7, I know by the power rule that its derivative is 7x to the 6. Likewise, if I had the function g of x, and it was 2x cubed plus 5x, its uh, derivative by the chain rule, or by the power rule, would be 6x squared plus 5. All right, what about the function uh, capital F of 2x cubed plus 5x to the 7th? What about its derivative? Now, some of you may notice here that this capital F is kind of a combination of the little f and the little g of, g of x functions. And that's exactly true. Capital F can be written as the composition of little f of g of x, which means I put g of x into little f. Um, so that means when I write this, I can replace the g of x with the 2x cubed plus 5x, all right? So what I'm doing here is replacing the g with the f because we have g of x equals that. Uh, and then I now take what's inside that parentheses after the f, so that 2x plus 3, 2x to the third plus 5x, and I put that in for the x part of, um, of f. In other words, instead of having just an x here and here, we're now going to replace that uh, with this 2x cubed plus 5x, and that's going to go there. So we're, we're putting this, we're putting in the 2x cubed plus 5x into the x part here, and then that's going to come back and would give me this. So. The main idea here is that this capital F is that's more complicated than functions we've seen before is the uh, composition of two other functions. And this then allows, was going to allow us a formula or an approach to take the derivative of this more complicated function. And the idea here um, is the following. If capital F can be written as a composition of two functions. So g of x is inside of f, then uh, the derivative of capital F is going to be the derivative of little f evaluated at g times the derivative of g. That's the, the idea there. And this is known as the chain rule. OK, so let's uh, see how this uh, applies in, in this situation. So again, um, if we let, uh, let, me, let me do it this way. I'm going to call this an example. So example, capital F equals 2x cubed plus 5x to the seventh power. Find its derivative. So to do that, I'm going to notice um, that capital F can be written as little f composed with g, where uh, little f is x to the seventh, and g is this 2x cubed plus 5x. I like to call the, the g the inner function, what goes inside, and the f as the outer function. All right, so um, by the box above, all right, uh, that's this meaning this box up here, we know that the derivative of capital F is going to be little f evaluated, the derivative of little f evaluated at g times the derivative of g. 
Okay, so um, what is, we, we saw earlier um, here that little f, derivative of little f was uh, seven x to the six, little, the derivative of little g is gonna be six x squared plus five. Okay, so we're gonna use that fact. So now we're gonna have seven. So the derivative of capital F is gonna be the derivative of little f, which is gonna be seven parentheses to the six times the derivative of little g, which was six x squared plus five. And the question is, um, what goes inside this parentheses here after the seven? And what goes in there is g, and so that's gonna be two x cubed plus five x. So the whole answer is going to be seven times two x cubed plus five x to the six times parentheses six x squared plus five close parentheses. Now, there's, that's, a, that's kind of the formal way to do it. Another way to do it is I like to think of this as a box. So I'm gonna call this like approach A, and then here's approach B. Both of these ways work. Yeah, I can think of F, again, F, F in this case was um, 2x cubed plus 5x to the seventh power. So I can think of that as a box to the seventh power where inside the box is the inner function. That's why I like to call G the inner function. So inside my box, I have two X cubed plus five X, and then outside I have my box with the, um, with to the seventh power. So inside is G of X, which is two X cubed plus five X. All right, so then how do I use this to take the derivative? Well, the derivative is going to be then, I'm going to take the derivative of the box. Okay, so it's going to be the derivative um, of f with the box times the derivative of box. Okay, that may be a little confusing that way, but let's just go ahead and apply it. So I'm looking at my box. I'll color that in red here. So what's the derivative of that? Well, I've got a box to the seven. So by the power rule, I bring down seven. I take my box and I put it to the sixth power because I reduce it by one. And now by the chain rule, I need to take the derivative of the box. Okay. And again, what's inside the box? Inside the box um, is this two x cubed plus five x. So my next step is I'm gonna have seven, two x cubed plus five x to the sixth power times the derivative of what's inside the box, which is gonna be six x squared plus five. And that's my answer. And notice that answer, uh, the, that answer, this one matches this one. They're the same. And so you can use either approach, okay? They both work in doing this, all right? So let's uh, apply this to some more examples. And we're gonna go start off slow with these examples um, so that you can see, kind of get this idea of what the inner function is and what the outer function is. So the next example we'll say um, was it find, um, the derivative, find the derivative at capital F for capital F equaling the sine of x squared. All right, so what's my inner function? What's my outer function? Well, my outer function is sine x. My inner function is x squared. So this is inner, this is outer. And I notice, um, that when I do f, little f composed with g, that means I'm putting g into f. So g is x squared. Again, so here's my g. So I go up here, down there. And so now I've got, oops, 
Uh, I want that to be black. Okay, black there. And now wherever I go back to my F function here, which was in blue, there's my F function. And wherever I see this X, I want to replace that by what's inside here. So doing that, I'm going to get sine of X squared. And that matches with what I have up here. So these, I've got the correct inner and outer functions. So what is the um, derivative? By doing that main boxed idea I had at the very beginning, remember that was uh, this idea, I'm gonna highlight this in some color, let's say pink, because I don't use pink very often here. Okay, there's that pink box. That's the idea we're gonna be doing here. So the derivative here was going to be um, of capital F is going to be little f prime evaluated at g times g prime of x. So what is what is the derivative of little f here? So we'll just do this. So f is sine x. So its derivative is cosine x, and g was x squared or is x squared and its derivative then is 2x. Okay, so we're going to use those here. So now I'm going to have f prime. Use this part first. So I'm going to have f prime, which is cosine of big parentheses. I'm not going to put the x there because I want to put the g in there. So let me just put that in there. It's going to be g, cosine of g times g prime, which is this. So that's going to give me uh, 2x. So this comes from that part, and this comes from that part. All right, and now I just put in what is g. g was x squared, is x squared, and so I get this. And then more common to put the 2x first, and so the final answer would look like this. All right, so that was, um, again, using kind of the, the method A there. And now I'm gonna use the box method. So I'm gonna think of f of x, uh, which was which is sine of x squared. So that's like sine of box, because the inside the parentheses is my inner function, my g, and that's where my box goes. So then the derivative is gonna be the derivative of box. What's the, der or, sorry, derivative of sine? What's the derivative of sine? Well, derivative of sine is cosine. So I put cosine box times the derivative of box. Um, and again, what is inside the box? Uh, g of x um, inside the box is g of x, which equals x squared. Okay, it goes in all of these. Uh, so when I write that in, I've got cosine of x squared, because that's what's inside the box. And then I take the derivative uh, in this part right here. I'm going to take the derivative of what's inside the box. And when I take the derivative of x squared, it's 2x. And so then again, I'll put the 2x first, and I get 2x cosine x squared. And we see, once again, very nice that the two answers are the same, which is what we want. Now, when you do this, you don't have to do both of these methods. Uh, you can choose which method you like. I'm giving you two ways to do it because some people like the like method A and some people like method B. The hope is that you can do, you, you can do one of these, do it correctly, and, um, and then as you do these more and more, you actually won't even need to consciously think of, of doing either method A or B. You'll just do it automatically. All right. But this to get started, to get familiar with this, because this is a new idea. Many of you haven't seen this before. Um, you can either use method A or B, whichever one you feel more comfortable doing. All right. Let's do a third example here. So in this example, we're going to look at, we're going to let, um, we're going to find the derivative of capital F um, for capital F equaling e to the square root of x. So you should think 
um, at this point, if you're not familiar with this type of approach here, you should think about what is your outer function and what's your inner function. So um, little f, and I'm going to call that e to the x, and that's my outer function. And little g is going to be the square root of x, and that's my inner function. And so when I compose little f with g, that means I'm going to have uh, li uh, little f, and I'm going to put in square root of x in for wherever I have uh, x in f. So um, here, let me do a different color there. OK, so because of this here, that's why I'm going to get this. And then here, I'm now going to take what is f. I've got this x here, this x here. So I'm going to put this in for x. And so in my f function, I'm going to have e to the square root of x. All right, and these two match. So that's what I'm going to use. So if I'm doing method A, then the derivative is going to be little f prime evaluated at g times g prime of x. That's, that's the um, idea in that pink box at the very beginning. All right, so I want to find out what if f is um, e to the x, then the derivative of that is e to the x, because that's the same. And g of x is square root of x. What is its derivative? Well, that's going to be, um, uh, it will be 1 over 2 square root of x. Let me just go into a little bit more detail about that. Uh, I can write g as x to the 1 half power. So when I take its derivative, I do the power rule, I get 1 half x to the negative 1 half, because I subtract 1 from a half. And then I can write that as 1 half 1 over x to the 1 half power, which is the same thing as 1 over 2 square root of x. Okay. Some of you have done this, um, have done this enough and feel comfortable enough with this that when you have the derivative of the square root of x, you just automatically know that that's going to be 1 over 2 square root of x. And that's great if you're at that stage. If you're not at that stage, you can keep doing it. Um, and maybe, and it may be soon in the future that you'll get to the stage that that will just make sense to you. Okay. All right. So now we're back here. Uh, let me circle where we're at. We're back here and we want to apply these ideas, the results that we just got to this. Okay. So what is F prime? F prime is e to the x. So we're going to put in e to a big parentheses here because we don't have uh, here we don't have just a, 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 an x we have g to the x so really yeah this is going to be e to the g of x all right and then I have to put in what g prime of x is which is one over two root two that's coming from this part right here so g that goes here and then we get this over here. All right, and from there, we have g, uh, e, and what is g? g is square root of x times 1 over 2 square root of x. And I could write this then as 1 over 2 square root of x, e to the square root of x. There's other ways you could write that. Um, notice that you cannot, in this final answer, in the box answer that I put there, you can't cancel out the square root of x's, OK? Um, you have to just leave the answer like that. Now, if I do the other technique where I'm going to do the box method, we have, again, our function e to the square root of x. That's our original function. And I'm going to think of that as e to the box. So what is the derivative? It's going to be the derivative of e, which is e. And then I put the box there, times the derivative of the box. All right, and what goes in here, so um, the inner function or inside the box, inner function is g of x, which is square root of x. That's what's inside this box is here. All right, so I'm going to have e to the square root of x, because that's what's inside the box, times the derivative of square root of x 
And from what we just did up, up above, we know that the derivative of square root of x is one over two square root of x. And so I get this as an answer. And again, my two answers um, match, uh, which is really nice to have. Okay, so let's see, um, let's do another example. All right, so we're gonna differentiate f of capital F of x, which is gonna be the cube root of five x squared minus four. Yeah, I look at this one, it's a more complicated. I can't use the power, power rule on this. Can't use the product rule. Can't use the quotient rule. It's, it's more complicated, but I can write this capital F as the composition of two functions. All right, so let's see, what's, uh, what's my inner function? What's my outer function? Well, I'm first gonna note that capital F can also be written as parentheses five X squared minus four to the one third power. So the cube root is the same thing as uh, the inside being to the one third power. So my outer function is going to be uh, x to the one third power. So that's my outer function. My inner function is going to be five x squared minus four. And I can check, you don't have to do this every time, but I can check that if I compose those two functions together. Um, I'm going to have f, and then inside of f, I'm going to put in what g is, which is that. So again, I go from here, to up here, and then there. You don't have to mark this. I'm just marking this to help people make sure everybody understands. Um, I, I don't need, to, I wouldn't do this normally, but again, just to make, trying to make it clear for everybody. And now I'm going to take f, uh, and put in the five x squared minus four into wherever f wherever x is for f. So remembering that um, f is this, and inside that I've got here's my x and here's my x. So when I apply that here, I'm going to have the inside part to the one third power, and that is my function there. So um, I got my function described as a composition of two, my original function. So the derivative of that original function, the derivative of capital F, is going to be uh, little f prime evaluated at g times g prime of x. All right. And again, what I'm going to work out uh, what f, the derivative of f and g are. So f is x to the one third. So when I take its derivative, then that's going to be one third x. And now I have to subtract one from one third. That's going to give me negative two thirds, which is often written as x to the two positive two thir thirds power if I put it in the denominator. Okay. You can also some of you like can you write that as the the um, cube root of x squared? And you can but I'm not gonna do it right now, but that's a perfectly fine thing to do. And g of x, if g of x is five x squared minus four, then its derivative is 10 x. All right, so we're gonna use that. So now I've got f prime. So f prime is this one third parentheses to the negative two thirds power. I'm using uh, this idea here. So that's what's coming down here. And I leave the big parentheses there because that's where G goes. Well, let me, maybe I should just write that. There's G. Okay. And then times um, what do I have? I'm going to times G prime, which is 10X. And that here is what goes right there. And then if I write that out, now I've got one third, I re replace G there, which is five X squared minus four to the negative two thirds power times 10 X. 
And then uh, rewriting that, I could put the 10 X on the top. I could put the three in the bottom and I could put the five X squared minus four, which is in parentheses to the two third power in the denominator. And I get that. Okay. I could also do this by the box method, but I'm not going to on this example. I'll just kind of go back and forth between not doing the box and doing the box. But this is this is the uh, correct answer um, going through on this method. Okay, so now let's do a, another example. Uh, we're gonna um, find y prime for y equals to e to the negative two x cosine of four x four t. Sorry, y equals e to the negative two t times cosine four t. Now the first thing I notice about this problem is that when I write out y, y is e to the negative two t times cosine of four t. So I've got I've got the product of two functions there. So we have to use the product rule, right? I have e to the negative two t is one function, cosine of four t is the other function. I multiply them together. So um, so by the product rule, what do I have? We've got y prime is the first times the derivative of the second. Uh, and notice I, I'm using ddt here instead of dtx um, because my variable in this problem is t. All right, and then I have the second cosine of 4t times the derivative of the first, which is e to the negative 2t. Okay. So now I need to figure out what is what are those derivatives. So um, so we're gonna do a little bark box here. So what is ddt of cosine of four t? This is where I have to use the chain rule. Okay. So um, I've got this cosine of 4t, and let's just call that, um, we'll just call that capital F of t, okay? That's really then gonna equal um, the cosine, that, that if I let little f equal cosine of t and little g, it's gonna equal 4t, then um, when I do f composed with g of t, I'm going to get cosine of 4t, which is uh, capital F of t. So the derivative, I'm going to do this one by the, the box method here. I'm going to have cosine of box. Oh, sorry, I didn't write that notation right. I want to take the derivative, ddt, of cosine of box. OK, and when I do that, what do I get? Well, I take the derivative of cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? It's sine. So I put sine of box times derivative of box. And um, what goes inside the box? So inside the box is this g of t here. And so now I've got sine of 4t. And what's the derivative of 4t? It's 4. So I can write this as 4 sine of 4t. OK. So that was the first part. I'm going to circle that in purple. And now I also need to find out what is the derivative of e to the negative 2t. Again, we need to use the chain rule. Okay, so I have, uh, I'll uh, just call this, what do I call this? I'll call this H. Capital H of T is E to the negative 2T. So what is my inner and outer function? My outer function is E to the T. My inner function is negative 2T. So that if I do F of G of T, that's gonna be E 
to the negative 2t, which is F capital H, capital H, sorry, capital H of t. All right, so uh, the derivative of, of H is going to be ddt of e to the box, which is going to be e to the box, because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, times the derivative of box. And what goes inside the box, inside the box is this negative 2t, so that when I continue doing the derivative, then I've got e to the negative 2t times uh, negative 2, or just writing it as negative 2 e to the negative 2t. And that's that answer there. Some of you have noticed here that whenever I take the derivative of e to some um, function, no matter what the exponent is there, the answer, the derivative of that is always going to be the derivative of the exponent times e to the original function. All right. So like in this one, I have e to the negative 2t. So I take the I look at the exponent, negative 2t. I take its derivative. I get negative 2. So then I say the derivative is negative 2 times e to the negative 2t. If my original function were e to the um, x squared, then the derivative of that would be uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x. So the derivative of e to the x squared would be 2x times e to the x squared. If my um, original function was e to the 1 half x, then the derivative would be 1 half e to the 1 half x. All right. If you see that, then you can use that idea because that, that will always work. All right. Now, going back to what we originally had up here, we had this one for the derivative. So I'm going to write that back down here. That's y prime. Um, y prime was equal to uh, e to the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. All right, and so now what do we have? We know that the derivative of cosine 4t was from up here or sine 4t, and then we've got cosine 4t here, and then we have the derivative of e um, to the negative 2t, which here was negative 2e to the negative 2t. So you have that as an answer, and that's a perfectly fine answer. Uh, some, in some cases, Oh, you know what? I made a mistake up here. I'm going to go back this. I'm sure that you all saw this and you're probably thinking, what's loony with Coach Dorf? Um, uh, I just made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Um, when I was back here at this stage here, I said, what's the derivative of cosine? And I said it was sine. That's not right. It should be minus sine. Okay, so this should be a minus. This then should be a minus. So when I do this, I should have a minus here. Okay, that makes much more sense. It makes me feel good. Um, and now when I look at this, I can say, oh, well, let's see. Um, there's something in common here that I can bring out. Um, I can bring out a negative 2e to the negative 2t because everything, the part before the plus has, has a negative 2e to the negative 2t and the part after the plus also has that and so when I do that, then I end up with a 2 sine 4t plus cosine 4t. Um, and that would be an answer probably you would see in the back of the book uh, because you'd be factoring that out. Let me just make uh, reiterate this comment here about the mistake I made. We all make mistakes. That's just part of part of life, okay? It's not It's not a problem that you make a mistake. Uh, what you want to do is you want to learn from your mistakes and improve. I'm okay that I made a mistake here. Hope you guys are okay with the fact that I made a mistake. I caught my mistake and we corrected it here. I think it's good for you to see that I do make mistakes. All right. I'm not perfect. 
All right. And it's okay if you guys make mistakes, uh, but as you practice, you'll get better and better. So you'll make less mistakes. Next, uh, let's do uh, another example. This one's going to be a little bit harder here. So what's uh, this example going to be um, here? I'm going to look at um, y is going to equal secant cubed of 2x plus 1 find y prime. For that. Okay. So uh, some of you may say, well, I could I could write secant cubed um, as secant times secant times secant and do the product rule um, a few times and you could get the correct answer. In the long term, it's easier, I think, to do the chain rule here. All right. So in doing this, uh, I'm first going to notice that I'm going to write my original problem. Uh, the secant cube means that I have secant of 2x plus 1 all to the third power. All right, so if I do the box method, then I've got y is going to be equal to the box cubed. Right, And inside this box, inside the box, is the secant of 2x plus 1. All right, so now when I take the derivative, y prime, that's going to be about 3 box squared times the derivative of the box. And again, inside the box, we've got that secant 2, 2x plus 1. And if I write that out a little bit, then I've got then the secant 2x plus 1. This uh, 2 up here, then I can write down here as just a square. So it's secant squared. And then I've got the derivative of secant of 2x plus 1. Now, what makes this problem a little bit more difficult is that uh, the derivative of that secant 2x plus 1, um, I'm going to have to do the chain rule again. So we have to use chain rule uh, again a second time to do this. So I'm going to look at this as, uh, call this, why don't we call this capital F of x to equal secant of 2x plus 1. So that can be written as the secant of box. So then the derivative is going to be, what's the derivative of secant? Well, that, that is secant tangent. So I'm going to have secant box tangent box times the derivative of box. And in this case, uh, what do I have inside the box? Inside the box here is... 2x plus 1. And that's the same in all of these. Okay, so I'm going to have secant of 2x plus 1, tangent of 2x plus 1, times the derivative of 2x plus 1, which is just 2. Okay, and you probably, some of you probably want to write that as putting the 2 out front, so it looks like this. Okay. So now I'm going to take what I had up here, bring that down here. So I've got uh, 3 secant squared 2x plus 1 times the derivative of secant of 2x plus 1. And we just saw that this part here, that is equal to this. So I'm going to end up with 3 secant squared 2x plus 1 times 2 secant 2x plus 1 tangent of 2x plus 1. That's coming from here. 
And now I've got that three and the two, so I'm gonna multiply those together. And I have a secant squared and I have a secant. So when I combine those, I get a secant cubed two X plus one. And then I have a tangent two X plus one. And that's my answer there. Okay. Um, let me show you uh, one example of a different type of problem where you're not necessarily given a function, but you're given a values of functions. So in this example, and this example is in my, uh, it's similar to example eight in the lecture notes. But if I have a, a function, let's call it H, and we're gonna write it as F of G. Then again, by that original box at the very beginning that was in pink, the derivative of H is gonna be F prime of G of X times G prime of X. And if I wanna value H at a certain value, like let's say one, then I'm gonna put one in for X. And so I need uh, to compute the value of H prime of one. I need to know what G prime of one is, uh, G of one, G prime of one, and then F prime of G of one. Uh, so we need uh, to know G of one, okay, because that comes from here. We also need to know G prime of one, and we need to know uh, what F prime of G of one is. All right, this part goes here, and this gives me that. All right, so sometimes you have problems like this, and you'll be given a uh, table. So let's look at this problem here. Here we have this table of values. Let me center this a little bit. All right. And again, we wanted to find G of one. So to find G of one here, I look at this table and I notice on the far right side, I have the far right column, it says X and then it has one, two, and three. So to find G of one, I go to the third column and it has G of X. And I find the intersection of G of X going down and one going across, and I see that G of X, uh, G of one is three. So, um, oh, sorry, I'm trying to get my uh, iPad to work a little bit here. Okay, so I wanted G of one, and G of one was three. I also needed to know G prime of one. So I look on there and I see that G prime of one, I have the second, I have the row of, that has one on the left. I go all the way to the far right and I see G prime of one is two. Okay. And then I want to find what F prime of G of one is. So that was F prime. We saw that G G of one was three. So now I'm gonna look, I have to find F prime of three because we wanted F prime of G of one. So F prime of three. And I see that that looking at the very bottom row and going down from F prime, I see that that is six. Okay. So now if I go back to my iPad here, then I've written in those values from the table. So we know, uh, we need to know those. Um, and we got these, I should say, we can get these from the table, then get these from the given table. And so H prime of one is going to equal, again, F prime of G of one times G prime of one. And that's going to be F prime of three times two. 
where these are coming from. I'm putting this in for the three here and I'm putting this in for the two there. And then uh, this is going to be a six times two. And I'm doing that because this goes in here. And so I end up with 12 as my answer. Now, that's, hopefully you can see the, the, prod, the how to do this one. Um, it's not really clear because I don't have the table there, but in my lecture notes in example A, as I mentioned, there's another problem that's just like this that um, will help you solve this. Okay, um, and let me end up by just telling you one last formula. If you have the derivative of a to the x, that's going to be 2 to the x times natural log of 2. All right. And so that matches if I do the derivative of e to the x, that's going to be e to the x times natural log of e. But we know that natural log of e is 1, so we get e to the x. So that works really well. And so then a final example of this is if I wanted to differentiate let's say y equals, um, oh, sorry, I made a mistake again. Sorry about that. This is not right. This is a to the x times natural log of a. Okay. So if I now have uh, y equals, let's just say four, um, we'll say, uh, 3x minus x squared. Then when I differentiate that, I'm going to use what's in. I'll make this a pink box too. So we have two pink boxes. Both of them are important. So by the pink box, y prime is going to equal um, 4 to the 3x minus x squared. That stays the same times the natural log of four times, and by the chain rule now, I have to do the derivative of that exponent. And so I get four, three x minus x squared times natural log of four, and then the derivative of the exponent is gonna be three minus two x. Okay, and some people would like to write this, perhaps to switch the order of this, uh, we could have 3 minus 2x natural log of 4 times 4, 3x minus x power. Okay. Hopefully that helps you, gives you some background on this, um, and I hope you have a great